Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back to the shop. It's good to see you again. So I got myself a post drill, found it in a yard sale. Guy had it, yard art, something like that, and decided he wanted to sell it. 20 bucks. It's rusty. It's been sitting outside for several years, but we're going to do what we can to get this thing up and running. So stick with me. This one should be fun. Let's get to it. All right. So this guy kind of redefines rusty. There's a couple of things that are loose on it. I was really surprised that set screw came loose and that handle came out of there. The only other thing that moves on this, other than the table, is the uh, little advancing dog at the top of the arm. So we got our work cut out for us. So when I started messing with this thing, I noticed that there was a wrench zip tied to the back of the flywheel, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure where this guy got this thing originally, but somebody kept all the parts together. So we're going to put it in a vinegar bath, see if we can bust up some of this rust so we can get this thing apart later on. And we're using apple cider vinegar, uh, white vinegar, and water. So we've got uh, 8 gallons of vinegar and 8 gallons of water in there. And we put this in the blacksmith shop, it's just sitting on a the coal crate right underneath the bellows and this has been here for seven days now and it looks like it's eaten into the rust pretty well and the hope here is is that it worked its way down in between the shafts and the gears and that kind of thing and everything's still pretty much frozen up but uh, we're gonna get some of this vinegar off here so it doesn't smell so much like a, a salad and get some of this rust off. And I'm not going to worry about neutralizing the vinegar or the acid, anything like that at the moment, simply because as soon as I get this disassembled, it's going right back into the vinegar. There's that wrench I was talking about, which is kind of cool to get an original tool. Now, this is something I don't suggest you do if you get a hold of a old rusty cast iron thing start beating on it with a hammer. There's a good chance I could crack something there. But it started moving a little bit and they were light taps. So it worked out. And you'll see me doing a lot of that on this thing. But the point here is, is that you shouldn't tap on cast iron of any kind. It could crack pretty easily or break chip. But in this case, I need to get it apart. There's only so many ways I can do this, and uh, if it breaks something, I'll just rebuild it. I'll recast it or whatever I need to do, but uh, in this case, everything seems to be working out okay. Some vinegar did get down in between these parts and, and loosen up the rust. I was really surprised how easy this actually did come apart. Um, it took a little bit of work, but this thing was rusted up pretty solid. There we go. And I'm filing off the little divots and the ridges that were left behind by the set screws that hold this thing together. And we get that flywheel off. And the shaft comes out, and the shaft is actually supposed to spin around inside the housing here, the main body. So we'll get that out and we'll dress up the inside of that body once it comes back out of the vinegar. There we go. These shafts seem to be in pretty good shape. There's some pitting here and there, but it's not too terrible bad. And we got a couple of retainer pins that hold the spindle up into this lead screw knuckle. This big gear has sort of a giant slotted screw holding it in place. It's a, like a shoulder bolt. And I let it soak with some uh, WD-40 on it for a while. And then you saw me add a little more there. And I was really surprised. It didn't take much effort to get that screw to, to come loose. I had to tap that screw out of that gear. It was harder to get that out than it was to get the screw out of the housing. I'm just loosening things up, giving them light little taps, a little bit of heat on this. And you're going to see me grab the end of this spindle 
with a, uh, there you go, pipe wrench. And it's going to leave some teeth marks in that spindle at the bottom. But I'll file those out. It really won't hurt much. Just need to get this thing moving, get a little lubrication on it. And there we go. You saw me tapping on the back of that gear. It's actually fairly light little taps to just encourage it along. But like I said, I would not suggest tapping on old rusty cast iron like this if uh, you don't have a way to fix it if it breaks. And this took a little bit of time. It wasn't too bad. It was about 30 minutes worth of uh, wiggling and lubing and you know, I filed the end down where I tapped on it with the hammer there. It had a little burr. And this is our keyway drive slot that matches up with the gear. Okay, all the little components into a bucket. The larger components, we will just stack everything back into the vinegar. And this is again another seven days later. And the bucket that I've got there, that tub, is full of water and baking soda. So it will neutralize that vinegar a little bit. And I hand scrubbed, wire brushed each and every part and I was very surprised as to how clean all these parts came out and my little uh, hand wire brush just couldn't get in all those cracks very well so I did a lot of this uh, with the rotary wire wheel got a little 300 grit sandpaper some WD-40 and I'm just cleaning up where the shafts ride getting as much of the rust and surface pitting out of there as I can without taking too much material off and that worked out pretty well I was able to hone those out pretty good and we'll get a coat of paint on this stuff and we'll start putting it back together yes you heard me correctly i said paint if you've watched this channel at all in the past i build machinery and do things i never paint anything i love to see what they're made out of the old patinas that kind of thing but in this case i decided to paint this thing just to see how it would come out um i wanted you know basically the contrast from what it did look like to something that looked newer and i'm going to paint all of the gears uh, the cast iron parts other than the body um, this sort of silver color it will give it some nice contrast and I'll do the body and the center of the flywheel in black so we'll see how this comes out I'm not the big painter guy but we'll, uh, we'll figure it out as we go here so you're going to notice that flywheel in the back has a V groove for a belt in it and that is something we're going to utilize so there's not much documentation on it, but uh, I was curious as to why they would cast in a V-belt groove into a flat flywheel on these things. So I started doing a little research. I found a young man in Texas who had a couple of champion drills like this that had um, some small GE electric motors on them, the same situation and uh, i was talking to him and he tells me that he's run into a few that have had electric motors on them the uh, flywheels were cast somewhere around 1925 it was an option they offered i have not been able to find any documentation in any of the buffalo forge catalogs that i've been able to find so Man, if you've got any information on that, any more information, let me know. The one thing I was able to figure out is that uh, the particular motor they were using was a quarter horse uh, General Electric motor. It was used on a wide variety of different types of uh, machinery. 
including washing machines, things like that, and these drills. So I'm assembling this lead screw at the top of this thing, and you notice I put together a little thrust bearing, and these things in their catalog describe that thrust bearing as being an anti-friction bearing for the spindle. And it gave ease of drilling. So yeah, there's uh, that was one thing that was integrated into this drill that I thought was pretty cool. And the thrust bearing, yeah, there's a few pits and a couple of the balls on this thing after they came out of the vinegar, but it's not a real high speed machine. So I think they're gonna be fine. The raceways were in really good shape. So, okay, so that lead screw guide coupler has the thrust bearing in it and the spindle with that groove in the top of it will slide up inside there's a couple of retainer pins that go on either side of that groove that allow that coupler to bring the spindle up and down and the lead screw will be pinned in place in the coupler with a set screw Get the handle on top of this guy Get a set screw in it and this all started going back together quite well I was really really impressed with how tight the tolerances still were I mean these things are fairly crudely made and the tolerances aren't super tight anyway but uh, it was pretty good I was I was impressed so that lower gear that's on that spindle shaft has a keyway in it that rides along the keyway in the spindle so as that gear is pushed around by the opposing pinion gear the shaft is able to slide up and down inside it now you didn't get to see me put that large gear on um, yeah, I just ran out of memory in the camera before I realized it so I did not go backwards just to get the shot. Sorry about that, but I think you get the idea. That large gear is sort of half pinion gear and half direct drive for the uh, flywheel shaft. And we get this flywheel put back on and you'll be able to see this uh, V-belt groove. This is actually for a uh, 3 8 inch V-belt and it was, like I said, cast at the factory that way. And I was able to find a photograph of a champion um, drill, um, same fella in Texas. The, he said that the drill was unusable and he was just going to collect the motor, but he did send me a sort of a, an odd picture of that. I'll put it in here so you can see what I'm talking about. I don't know, but I think that drill probably could have been rebuilt. But anyway, he tells me that this wheel was cast at the factory as well with a V-belt groove in it. And it's early to mid-1920s as well. So this is what we're basing this off of. And I'm going to go ahead and put a motor on mine since I have the exact motor that was on this guy. We'll see how that works out. What I'm doing here is I'm building a bracket for the very bottom of the extension for the table. The table sits on a, a one and a quarter inch solid steel round that sockets into the bottom of the chassis. It goes down the post that you mount this to. And then this bracket at the bottom is the only piece of this that was actually missing. So I took a few measurements, stacked up some scrap steel and welded that up this worked out pretty well not the prettiest thing but it's all the way at the bottom nobody will ever see it so i'm good and you'll see that on assembly so this is my ge motor circa 1925 from the serial number this has got brushes on it which is a really interesting thing and what i discovered is i got this thing apart this motor actually runs pretty well i just want to do a good cleaning on it and make sure that it's going to last for a while. It's got a little end play, so I'll stick it in the thrust washer in one end or the other. And the thing about this motor is it's sort of inside out, inverted. When you open up these AC electric motors, typically the uh, 
ele incoming electricity goes to the windings that are in the housing. This is just the opposite. It's got sort of a permanent magnet situation in the housing and the coils are on the armature. So in researching these motors apparently they were used for everything from uh, drill presses to washing machines back in the day. So they were sort of a wide use motor. What I'm doing here is I'm swapping the two wires that go to the brushes that are going to allow this to rotate in the opposite direction. In this case this was pretty simple. This motor it only had two wires that could be swapped that were close enough and they were um, it was pretty obvious as to how that needed to happen so pretty easy setup on this particular motor to get it to rotate in the opposite direction so I just sprayed it down with a little WD-40 um, break up some of the grease a little penetrating oil in there and uh, then I went after it with some uh, electrical parts cleaner so the centerpiece here I just cleaned up with a little bit of acetone and a shop towel obviously and this cleaned up really really well for the number of years this thing has been on this planet it's it's surprisingly in really good shape and this is another yard sale find I have a lot of yard sale finds estate sale finds stuff like that and when I see something that looks interesting I'll just pick it up and store it and uh, Eventually I'll find a use for it and that was the case with this. So I've had this motor for probably a couple of years and um, It just happened to be the motor that uh, from what I understand was used on these early drills And these drills have a number of names to them. They're post drills, pillar drills um, Self-advancing drills I think the um, catalog just calls them a drill. We get this thing put back together and it went back together really easily. Not that many moving parts in this thing. It's got little uh, fibrous sponges at either end that hold the oil for the bearings and they were in really good shape as well we got our little black brass rivets back in there to get our identification plate back in place and we just put a an extension cord on this thing and the cord that came off of it was simply two wires there was no ground wire on this thing and uh, that's what i put back on it but i may add a ground lead to this thing eventually Okay, let's get a pulley put on this thing. So one and a quarter inch on this quarter horse motor should be enough of a gear reduction. All right, there we go. Let me give it a shot, plug it in. And it's turning in the correct direction. It sounds good. There we go. All right. Now we need something to mount all of this to, and this is just a fur four by six beam. I got it at, uh, the local hardware store and I've marked out where I need all the holes I drilled them and then I oversized them a little bit so we have a little wiggle room for mounting and I'm going to give this a little coating of uh, something called carbon gray it's just a, a stain basically but it'll help seal the wood a little bit And this will turn a little darker over time as well. This is going out into the blacksmith shop that is out in the steel building. There's no heat, there's no electricity, any of that. So I just bolt through bolted it onto this post with um, some carriage bolts. So we just stick the solid in there, a solid piece of round, it's only one and a quarter inch, 
and we tighten up the set screw at the top and we put our bracket that we built at the bottom and tighten up the set screw in it we just put some lag bolts there instead of bolting it all the way through we got some two inch lag bolts holding that in place and here's our table it's on a little pivot you can swing it out of the way catalog says you can swing it out of the way and put a wheel on the fork and work on wheels with it so if I ever need to drill a wagon wheel I suppose I've got that going for me <laughs> okay and this is the belt we're going to use and this is going to mount just above the drill press Uh, like I said, a lot of these were driven with a leather belt in a shaft drive shop. And a belt would come down from the shaft in the ceiling and drive the thing when you engaged it. And I believe it was probably an experiment by Buffalo Forge to cast in these V-belt drive things, but... Uh, this is what we're going with. I've not seen anybody set one of these up this way. I thought it was pretty unique. I had the motor from the same era. And uh, so we're going to do. So the one odd thing about this is it's got a regular Jacobs chuck in it that's newer. It looks as if someone's um, threaded the end of the spindle and put that on. I could not find any references to where that particular chuck was offered with these. But since the Jacobs Chuck was invented in 1902, and this thing is somewhere around 1925, it's entirely possible that it did come with a Jacobs Chuck. So if you have any information, let me know. So we're going to go ahead and hand crank this. I've got the belt off the motor at the moment, and that is a three-quarter inch hole that we're drilling there. And that went through that pretty easily. It took a little bit of cranking. You saw the beginning and the end of that, but it got through it pretty easily. And get the belt on this thing. And this screw up top adjusts how quickly the bit will advance. So we're going to slow it down to one click per. And we'll get some oil on this thing and see how this little motor. I was afraid that it would be a little bit underpowered for this, but it seems to be doing a job, especially drilling a three-quarter inch hole. Um, it's quite a gear reduction on there, though. We've got a, a one and a quarter inch pulley as opposed to a 16 inch flywheel, so it's a good gear reduction. And that little motor seemed to handle that quite, quite well for such a big hole. All right. There we go. I'll take a little closer look at this. I put the handle in about halfway through and tighten it up just to see what it would look like when the motor's running it. I've got the little advanced dog flipped over so it's not driving that bit down. But this is basically how it looks and how it's working and it seems to work really well. This is something I will use in the shop. I am very happy with the way this turned out one of the coolest projects I've done I think and uh, I look forward to using this all right there we go all right guys there you go I have a working post drill and I'm very happy about that it's got a motor on it pretty unique you don't see those all the time and uh, works really good so uh, was really surprised it was able to drill holes the size it did as easily as it did anyway guys i want to say thanks to all you folks who tune in consistently and watch these videos it's much much appreciated so if you're new here why don't you hit the subscribe button check out see what we're doing all the time and uh give me a thumbs up a little like that'll help out the little channel really appreciate that and uh if you got any friends out there then all you guys are on social media now that you know the world's pandemicking so share it it's easy to do just a little share button share it. all right and uh we'll see you next time right here at big dog forge bye-bye